Okay, so um, so for today, our class will be uh, fully online for everyone. So there's gonna be more people. Should be more people in uh, over here, and um, so for the physical students, this might be the first time. So if you want have uh, any question, you can uh, talk to me on the audio or you can leave a message here. Um, but for the <laughs> online student, already it's the same thing. Uh, all right, so just that we have more people on uh, online now. Uh, we are we are. For today, we will for the first hour. I plan to continue discussing uh, the lecture notes, which is to start with chapter two, right? Uh, chapter two is to talk about Newton's laws, and then talk a bit about Newton's law, and then for uh, after the second half of today's class, maybe we will do some tutorial questions. Okay, so uh, we'll see how the time goes, and um, so because now there's no physical students, so like. Um, uh, I can't see your faces, so I don't know whether uh, whether anyone is confused if I explain something. Usually when I explain something, I can tell by looking at your face whether you're confused or not, and then I can repeat again or go slower or something like that. Uh, but now I, I don't see faces, uh, so let's see how it goes. Okay, so let's talk about Newton's Law, Chapter 2. Um, so Chapter 2 uh, is mostly about Newton's law and actually Newton's law is the basis of the whole course of uh, this one mechanics right because everything is actually based on Newton's law so we're gonna learn the Newton's law in this most fundamental form and once we learn that already there are three laws then we will realize that everything else that we learn after this is actually calculated from Newton's law okay so uh, everything else what we will learn later is in the future chapter is about linear momentum angular momentum conservation of energy things like that uh, is actually based on uh, Newton's law right so this is the again this is again the foundation what I mentioned in the first lecture was that what when we learn physics right we I imagine is something like we are building some building right so every new knowledge that we learn is building one something on top of the other so this one is the foundation right so in order for your building to be strong you need to have a strong foundation okay so if you are uh, if you are not very familiar with Newton's law and then you go on the later and later courses later and later years um, it is it will be more and more of a struggle okay but if not uh, then it will be a bit better so uh, let us start with uh, by talking about Newton's law okay so there are three laws and I um, will introduce the laws one by one so starting with the first law okay so Newton's law is to talk about forces okay and this the three laws of Newton will explain how the force will influence the motion of the object and most of these laws uh, have probably already been covered in the high school already right but right now we are learning it again in a more formal and more mathematical way so uh, more closer to the way that or, uh, Newton originally formulated so let us start to talk about um, forces uh, in the context of the first law so let me uh, check okay so full screen is here okay so uh, Newton's law is as I said right everything is about forces so what is a force what are what is a force so force is the simple way to define it right um, I can't tell you the full definition because that would require higher level physics but for the purposes of us uh, for this course uh, forces is basically the interaction between objects okay so between objects and it is a vector so it is a vector that means if you want to say what is a force we must give the magnitude and direction so uh, otherwise you can write in the vector notation okay so like this and like this and generally sometimes it might have a Z component K okay so a force have this and from this it, this is a vector so it's just like any other vector you can calculate its magnitude and direction so how do you study forces acting on a particular object so this is um, this is where I start talking about the free body diagram so if you don't know what is free body diagram yet or if you forgot uh, I'm gonna go through this again it is very important so the skill on knowing how to draw a free body diagram will help you solve 
the question correctly once you've got the diagram correct the rest of it is easy already so usually it is the main challenge in solving a particular problem so uh, yeah so a free body diagram okay so sometimes uh, for short we'll just call this FBD okay uh, a free body diagram is to uh, identifying all the force that is acting on a particular object only okay so this is important on a single object only so this is identifying uh, all forces acting on a particular object okay so usually the object that we study is usually a box or a point particle right something that is small and we don't care what is the size yet okay so or the shape okay and usually it has some mass m and then uh, we want to figure out what are the forces acting on it right so uh, i will introduce you to different types of forces later but for now let's just call it some general force f1 and then maybe there's another force acting on it f2 right so right now there's two forces pushing on it but sometimes a force can go this way away from the object f3 okay so that is the free body diagram now the purpose of drawing a free body diagram is to figure out what is the net force okay so the net force is the vector sum of the object so if i have f1 over here right just uh, just a simple sketch right so i got f1 and then F2 is coming this way and then F3 is also coming something like this way and then the net force should be from here to here uh, I forgot my red pen let me get my red pen okay so the net force is coming from here to here so we call this net force right so the net force is the total of all the forces acting on a particular object okay uh, checking the status uh, yes I think it's record oh it's, it's yeah um, oh somehow the recording is stopped uh, yeah thanks 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 for letting me know never mind uh, I still got my backup is still running now okay uh, uh, so now my uh, we, we don't worry about teams um, but okay let me let me try one more time uh, yeah so for some reason it always stopped right so don't know why uh, but don't worry I got the backup is still running here okay yes okay okay good good thanks thanks uh, okay uh, so so this is how we figure out the net force acting on a particular object and um, it is a yeah so let me just define properly what do I mean when I say a net force okay so a net force is the vector sum of all forces acting on an object right so we're talking about one object only why do I keep emphasizing this is because sometimes when we solve a system right with multiple objects then you do not mix up okay uh, for man many many objects you look at one object one object got the free body diagram by itself another object got its own free body diagram so they are separate things okay so try not to mix up so it's a vector sum uh, if I have the equation of the forces you just do the math the same method as always right so I have f2 uh, whatever like if there's many many forces acting on it then just add up everybody okay so let's say if there are n forces acting on the system okay so sometimes you write it this way fi right so this is uh, how we draw a force acting on the object so um, another method that is very convenient to uh, solving a lot of problems later is to how to resolve the force right so because a uh, vector is force is a vector and most of the time we just need some direction only so we need to uh, find the component along that direction only so this is what I mean when we do a uh, resolving forces okay so uh, when we resolve forces right uh, we draw it on the XY plane and the XY direction is up to you to choose 
Okay, um, yeah, so we talked about this a bit in the Monday class, right? The coordinate axis is relative, it's your choice. That means you can, it's an artificial choice uh, uh, that you put in, right? But it shouldn't affect the system. So if you choose a, a certain direction already, right? So if I have uh, some force, okay, that is coming in this way, then I can, if I can resolve it here because if this is my angle theta, that means uh, I can get my x component is equal to f cos theta and the other one is uh, the vertical direction is f sine theta so these are the two forces that you uh, resolve right so uh, here we call this the horizontal component if I draw this the horizontal direction and the other one is the vertical component Okay, so um, that is the um, that is how you resolve forces. And another thing about force to introduce to you is the unit. So we are going to call this unit uh, the Newton. So we're going to let the unit of force be called Newton. Okay, so what is Newton in terms of the SI unit? Um, maybe you know already, but let's pretend we don't know yet because right now I'm just talking about force. So um, I haven't talked about how does the force, what is the force related to the other quantities like mass and uh, acceleration and things like that, right? So uh, you may have known in the high school already, but we are, we are starting the concept from the beginning, okay? So we are go going through the logical uh, development of the, uh, the concepts. So at this stage, um, there's no reason to decide what is the SI unit for the force yet, so that will come in later. Okay, so um, yeah, everyone clear so far? If any, so if there's any question, just um, let me know. Uh, I can check the questions here. Uh, so recording has started. It's still it's still running, and my OBS is still running. Uh, should be okay. So let's continue the story. Okay, so this, so th that is the general concept of force. And for now, let me introduce some basic types of force that we will deal with quite often. So when we talk about force, right, uh, every time when you want to solve a problem, you need to know how to draw the free body diagram. And when you want to draw the free body diagram, you need to know the, the force, so you need to know the direction, and you need to know the magnitude. So this is something to keep in mind, right? So every time we are learning a new type of force, we should learn how to determine its magnitude and direction, okay? Uh, some schools, they taught it in a simple way and some concepts get mixed up. So I will try to do it in a more careful, careful method. So um, what I'm going to do is every time I introduce a force, you know, we keep in mind how to determine the magnitude and direction, okay? Uh, sometimes there's misconception and sometimes it's surprising uh, what kinds of mistake that we can do if we don't get everything correct. So we are introducing uh, three basic forces. So this is part one. Part one is talk about three basic forces, right? So later there's a part two we will talk about more complicated force. So the first one I want to talk to you about is the normal force. Okay, so Normal force happens um, when an object is uh, touching a surface. Okay, so what do I mean by that? So when an object touching a surface, right? So let's say I have a box. Um, I have a box, right? And then it is sitting on the ground. Okay, so it's sitting on the ground. Right, so then there's going to be a normal force. So the normal force is, uh, so this is the surface, right? And it is from the, the, the normal force is from the ground to the surface. So it is acting in this direction, okay? Um, if I have another, so it depends on the surface actually. So if my surface is uh, having a tilted direction, right? So let's say this type of problem that we will often solve. If my box is sitting like this, okay, my the normal force is no longer pointing up, but should be pointing this way. So it's always 
perpendicular to the surface okay uh, even on a curved surface right so even if you can have a curved surface and if I have a box somewhere here right so uh, if I have if I know what is the tangent to the curve then my normal force will be perpendicular to the tangent to the curve right so the for the normal force I need to know the direction and magnitude so what is the direction so the direction is always uh, perpendicular to the surface okay so uh, all these are surface when it's touching it then this is the surface then this is the surface okay it's always perpendicular to the surface and then the magnitude what's the magnitude uh, right now, so remember, I'm, I'm starting the concept from the beginning, right? Um, the magnitude will depend on the situation, actually. So what I will say now is don't know, okay? So that um, most of so most students coming from high school, they will say, okay, magnitude here is mg, fine, right? But I have not explained to you why this is mg, because in this case, the magnitude is not mg. In this case, it's not mg, okay? So it is not advisable to memorize what is the magnitude and don't always put mg here uh, so what I'm going to say here is that the magnitude is determined from Newton's law so that is the most careful way we can do to avoid calculating mistakes okay and I haven't talked about Newton's law yet okay so that one will come later uh, but we are still talking about forces so the second one I will introduce to you is the tension okay so the tension is force is the force uh, due to uh, something like a cable or a string or or a cable okay so uh, something like a string that is uh, soft that can be uh, pulled so it is a something that is pulling an object okay so for example I if I have some uh, object here right so if this is my object and then it is attached to a string right and then maybe I got a pulley like this so there's a force acting on this uh, this will be the tension T okay uh, it could be some other direction so let's say this object is sitting horizontally on the ground and then it's attached to a string so the 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 cable is pulling this at some tension T so this is a string right so therefore the direction is easy to determine the direction right is always away from the object makes sense right because um, this is pulling away this is pulling away okay so you do not have a string right that have this kind of direction for the tension so this is wrong right and the reason is very simple because we are talking about strings here okay string can only pull something okay so it can only pull an object but you cannot push it because you push it the string will like nothing will happen right it will soften the string so the string is always the direction of tension is always away from the object and magnitude again don't know don't know okay so same as just now we need to use Newton's law to calculate Sometimes we know, or sometimes we can measure using experiment, but uh, there's no formula for, there's no, like, right now there's no general formula for tension, okay? So it's always based on calculation. The third force to introduce to you is the weight, okay? So weight is the force due to gravity, to the gravity of the Earth, or if we are doing a problem that is on a different planet uh, then it's on a different planet la. so basically uh, gravity of the earth okay so let's say I have um, let's say I have the earth right or the ground the floor then every object will experience a force that is pulling it uh, downwards so this is the force that everyone is uh, from everyone experience every every day because uh, everything will fall down if you let it go right so if you let go something it is falling down to the ground why because there is a force of gravity 
and in fact we have already solved this already in projectile motion where we the force of gravity will accelerate every object down to earth by g 9.8 so therefore for the case of weight the direction of the weight force is just towards the earth okay or the earth is usually the floor or the ground so ground or the floor or whatever place that is on the bottom okay and this time I can give you the formula for magnitude okay so the 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 force due to the weight is the mass of the object times G so this one has a formula that is mg okay weight is always mg okay so the m is the mass of the object okay and the g is your 9.81 so the acceleration due to gravity 9.80 okay so these are the uh, three kinds of uh, forces okay so this is page two any question everyone okay still recording and I'm still recording okay okay uh, just to be safe let me let me let me write the file first Okay, start recording, new file. So let's continue. Okay, um, so no one has question. If not, uh, if not, let's uh, now let's talk about Newton's law, right? The first law. So we have introduced. I have introduced three forces to you already. Now let's practice how to use them. So uh, firstly, let's talk about Newton's law first. All right, the first law. So Newton's first law. Okay, so what is Newton's first law about? So Newton's first law is for the case of equilibrium. Okay, so uh, equilibrium means zero net force. In other words, what Newton's first law tells us is that uh, if, if no net force, that means zero, acts on an object, then it will... Uh, have constant velocity okay constant velocity means zero acceleration okay so that means if I uh, if I draw a free body diagram and then I determine that my net force acting on this object is zero so this is the same as saying that uh, the acceleration of the object is also zero and acceleration of the object zero means the velocity of the object is constant okay so acceleration this is what I mean by acceleration and this is what I mean by velocity okay so if there's no net force acting object then uh, the acceleration of the system is zero and zero acceleration means the velocity is constant so this is the precise meaning of equilibrium so what do we mean when we say something is in equilibrium equilibrium right uh, in chemistry there is a lot of equilibrium also chemical equilibrium right uh, it is chemical so over there it just means that the ratio of the chemicals is the same no more changing so that's generally what it means by equilibrium okay so for us right uh, zero it uh, zero force is equilibrium so equilibrium means zero net force so F net equals to zero okay so that is the uh, concept of equilibrium right and first law so so far everything is still very simple but we must make sure everybody follow the concept right so if it's easy then good uh, uh, if it's new to you then we are then I'm introducing this so uh, uh, we are not uh, like starting from uh, suddenly uh, assuming knowledge from you okay so um, let's see how we use Newton's law uh, we are solving example 2.1.1 okay uh, we have a person standing in equilibrium on a flat ground okay so just a simple object uh, standing on the ground and then uh, 
based on this then we can determine the normal force acting on the person so this is what I mean when I say that uh, the normal force must be determined from Newton's law okay so this is the official method or not official method like the correct procedure okay sometimes when you do calculation you are fast you immediately say n equals to mg right but the reason why n is equals to mg is because of Newton's law so this is a must be do it in a systematic way okay so uh, the system that we are solving is like this so let's say a person standing on the ground and then most of the time you can choose your uh, coordinate axis okay so, um, I, I remember someone asking me like when you solve a problem uh, his school taught them to say which is positive which is negative so um, yes you need to do that here okay because this is important here so let's say positive y is upwards then let's draw the free body diagram acting on the person so what are the forces acting on the person um, this person is standing on the ground so there is a weight so we've got mg over here and standing on the ground means touching the ground so touching the ground there's going to be a normal force okay so that is the normal reaction force so therefore in the vertical direction um, what are my uh, what are the forces acting on this uh, object so this is my net force right uh, if you want so let me do it properly by writing the full vector form you don't have to do it all the time like this but just to show you the correct procedure okay because just to remind you that force is a vector okay so if uh, then now let's try to figure this out so this is some unknown vector that we want to determine and then the weight is mg so plus mg right so m is a scalar mass is just a scalar and the acceleration towards the ground is g right the vector g and what is the vector g because g is a vector that accelerates towards the ground we have solved this using uh, in the projectile motion right so it's negative uh, 9.8 so it's negative the magnitude of g in the j direction okay so that we got this right so we have my net force acting on the person is uh, n and then i got minus g in the j direction and because this object is in equilibrium by newton's law net force equals to zero so therefore the net force is minus g in the j direction is equals to zero so my equation for my net force vector is uh, positive g in the j direction uh, over here when i say g it just means 9.80 right so the magnitude okay so the magnitude so g 9.80 is the magnitude of my x gravity vector so it is pointing upwards okay so this is uh this is the um the expression for the normal force vector um i'm writing too much uh vector expression uh, but if you are most of the time it's just convenient to say that just write the magnitude is enough so that is perfectly fine right i'm just showing you the proper or the math the practicing the mathematics because uh, most students at this stage is not familiar with writing vectors so i'm just letting you practice but otherwise if you get your answer this way it's fine right nothing wrong okay so we got this okay so this one will give you the magnitude and then direction uh, upwards okay so that that is the difference right so if you get this you only get the magnitude must but remember to say the direction okay so it's upwards uh, the next simple example how do we make use of tension okay so we got this uh, situation so this is a scene from the movie Mission Impossible. Uh, Tom Cruise, whose mass is uh, 67 kg, is hanging from the rope. Uh, in this situation, calculate the tension of the rope. So this is example 2.1.2. Okay, so this is a person hanging uh, in the vertical direction. So hanging means not touching the floor. So no normal force in this situation. So what is the free body diagram acting on Tom Cruise? Uh, he is hanging by a cable. So there's a cable, there's a tension T. The T moves away from the object. Uh, mass of Tom Cruise is 67 kg. And then the weight of Tom Cruise is just 67 times 9.80. Then you get the weight in Newtons. Okay. So uh, instead of writing all this vector, right, you can also do it in this way, which is also correct. Okay, so I'm just showing you the different options that you can write 
uh, you can just say that along the vertical direction okay which is to say that upwards positive uh, is something that you can define then uh, we call up is negative so this is plus t and this will be minus mg so my net force is just t minus mg right so if i define my upwards already then based on the arrow i can minus the downward ones and plus the upward one so i got this type of situation and again this object is in equilibrium so by newton's law uh, f is equal to zero by newton's uh, first law so therefore zero is equal to t minus mg so the tension is equal to the weight of the object okay so that is how we determine tension so in these two simple examples right uh, the tension is same as the weight the normal force is also same as the weight in this next example it is we will realize that it is not always true this is why you have to be careful so let's look at example 2.1.3 okay so 2.1.3 right is a situation where let's say you are in taking a train or a bus you are standing on the train or the bus so if you're standing on a train on a bus and then usually on the train right there's something for you to hold uh, like in this picture okay so this person is in a, a train or a bus I don't know but he's holding on to something okay so when you're holding on to something right then there's some additional force that is supporting you so this is hanging from the ceiling by a cable so we can now uh, use this to draw the free body diagram okay so in this situation I have a person standing on the ground so I have a surface here so he is touching the surface uh, therefore there is a normal force here he is holding onto the handrails so the handrail is hanging from a cable or a, some uh, rope so there is a tension T and then this person has a weight so there's a mg okay so um so we can say that along the vertical direction okay so the uh, upwards positive then we say that uh, the net force acting along the vertical direction is plus n plus t minus mg right so n plus t minus mg okay so this person is in equilibrium right uh, equilibrium is definitely not accelerating so this person is in equilibrium so by Newton's first law okay uh, sometimes it's too long to write Newton's first law Newton's first law so I'll just say first law so by Newton's first law f net is 0 which is to say that 0 is equal to n plus t minus mg and uh, we find that the n right is equals to mg minus t so we see that only when there's no other forces the normal force is equal to mg but when there's something else there then the net force will be smaller than mg okay so we can easily imagine this so um, the net force is sort of like supporting the person against the floor so if he's holding onto something right then the net force is smaller um, you can actually this is nothing abstract you can actually experience this in your everyday life right because what is normal force how do you, you will feel your normal force if you are standing on the ground because when you're standing on the ground for a very long time right you start to feel tired am i right right so if you stand too long your legs will feel tired is because your muscles is feeling the the normal force coming through you your legs okay so that is the that is the normal force you are feeling you will make you tired okay but if you are standing and then you're supporting yourself with something else with a with a cable or tension t then you will feel the strain on your muscle is not so strong right you support yourself a little bit on your muscles so that's why the the normal force you're feeling is uh, you're not feeling so much tired anymore is because the normal force is lessened by your tangent t okay so that is your uh, normal force okay so everyone following so far oh so you want to uh, teach the physics behind the uh, maneuver gear for Mikasa is um, so for those who don't know right um, yeah uh, 
this is uh, Attack on Titan. So Attack on Titan uh, is, is about this uh, Mikasa here. Right, so uh, this two maneuver gear is uh, basically just cable, la, right? Cable and tension T, and then uh, this is already what we are learning right now. Okay, so she's they are swinging against the the maneuver gear is just uh, using the tension T and swing uh, pendulum motion and all those things. So yes, we are actually learning this. Okay, so this is Attack on Titan. Uh. Hydraulic ah. Uh, uh, so if yeah, not hydraulic. So the gas. So um, we are we won't learn gas now, but um, it's a combination of what you learn in the uh in the what what you learn in the thermodynamics course, right? So pressure against the piston, they will push you something, and then you got this, and then um, if in some let me think uh, maybe in the some later course in fluid dynamics we will we will learn this so oh i so i is this what is the the gear called in in japanese uh, sasageyo i didn't know yeah um <laughs> so what is the other question oh no yeah uh, i don't know so uh i didn't read the manga i just saw the series and I, 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 I saw the series in Japanese but just reading the subtitle so I didn't hear what they say um, okay so yeah uh, there's a lot of physics behind Attack on Titan and uh, and it's basically again uh, it's basically what we are talking about here so if you um, Mikasa here and then have a cable T and then usually they should against a building right so they attach the cable to the to some building so they will allow the Mikasa or Aaron or whoever to uh, swing with the tension T right so and then when they're swinging right so the physics is there right so when you're swinging the if you fix the length of the cable the this is a fixed distance so this is actually circular motion right and when the circular motion you got a t so uh, by newton's law this will we'll learn that later it is going to be mv squared over r that is the that is basically all the physics of the uh, attack on titan right that's all <laughs> right uh you can make it more complicated by adding two cables and things like that but the fundamental idea is the same uh yes just to yeah maybe to take into account the mg the weight of the person you know and things like that and uh and if this person collides against the building, you can also do all, all kinds of uh, calculation there. Uh, so, yeah, if you, are in, if you are interested in this, right, why don't you write this as your assignment problem that you can propose for yourself? Uh, that would be fun for you to do, right? Vertical maneuvering gear. Um, what is the direction upwards? Uh, uh, for 2.1.1. Yeah, so uh, this upwards is y. So, uh, so uh, up positive. Is that your question? Right. So, yeah. So uh, for Charles, the direction in two point one point one is upward positive. Um, if if you're asking a different question, just uh, ask again. Yes. Yes. Up upwards positive. Okay, so um, yeah. So when once we talk about hanging from cables, uh, yeah, we, I can take pictures from uh, Attack on Titan, Mission Impossible, all those kind of things. These are basically cable types of questions. So that was two point one point three. Uh, the next problem we can uh, okay, let's do it. Do what? 2.1.3 you mean 2.1.4 or assignment for attack on titan but it might be too simple la. so if you do the assignment on attack on titan yes yeah, try to solve a more uh, you can invent a complicated scenario and then solve some situation on that okay uh, yeah so these are the basic starting point uh, then 
you you can uh, consider more complicated things like what is the angular momentum if it collides what is the force that the person feels and um, now okay I just thought of something if you want to do this for assignment right uh, let's try to see whether this kind of machine is realistic um, is it possible for a real person to to use this machine what do I mean because when I when I saw the series right what the person like swinging here and there like very fast so it's very fast that means the person is undergoing very high acceleration so if you want to go very high acceleration can the can the body survive such a high acceleration or not and uh, if you want to use this kind of material right so what kind of a normal steel cable is it enough to support this type of person's weight just supporting mg is not enough because if you're going circular motion then the tension will be higher probably higher than mg i don't know you solve it and see right so you can find out what is the material that you need to use to 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 build this kind of maneuver gear right so uh it sounds like i'm talking rubbish now but there's a lot of physics problem that you can actually uh, work out and solve and do it as a assignment right as a as a proper assignment if you want okay Yeah, so two grappling hooks, so they can go in different directions. You may want to solve the system with the two hooks, right? Uh, yeah, so the speaking of two hooks, very good. This is precisely 2.1.4. I have two cables, so just nice coincidence. Uh, example 2.1.4, right? So in this example, I have an object that is indeed hanging from the ceiling from two cables so let me draw it here okay so I have a ceiling and then I have an object which could be your Mikasa and your two uh, two grappling hooks okay one shoot on this side of the ceiling the other shoot to this side of the ceiling and then uh, we will assume a symmetrical picture so both angles are the same right and then I want to find out what is the tension uh, on each of the cables so if this is symmetrical uh, we could assume both so both cables have the same tension T if you um, so this is the assumption that will that is correct that will sh save some few steps of calculation uh, if you do not assume you can assume T1 T2 you can still solve okay to, to get the answer uh, but to just to save the steps right so let me just say that okay both have the same t uh, magnitude of tension T the direction obviously is different right so both have T so the and then what other forces are acting on this mass uh, it is hanging from the ceiling so we got a weight mg so in this free body diagram this mass is experiencing three forces two cables and the weight mg so we can solve this um, as as uh, your by resolving the vector. So this time, not all the vectors are in the same direction. In the previous example, every one is vertical, but this one is not fully vertical. So you need to resolve your components. So for now, we just need to focus on this vertical components. Okay, and you can say up is positive. So uh, for here, right? Uh, what is the vertical component of this tension so this tension if I resolve it in the vertical direction I will get T cos alpha am I right and according to the question alpha is given to be 45 degrees and this is for one so the second one will have the same tension so plus T cos alpha and then these are the two upward forces then the other down force is the mg so i got minus mg and this is in equilibrium so this is your net vertical force and it should be zero by newton's law so what we got here is two cos alpha minus mg is equal to zero so i want to find out what is my t so it's very simple it is just mg over uh cos alpha and then there's a two over here so uh this object is having four kg right and then acceleration of gravity is 9.80 and then uh, 2 and then we got cos 
45 degrees. So uh, the answer is 27.7. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I got a question that um, can you use calculator in this course? Yes, because uh, most of the time the number that we have is not the perfect round numbers. So uh, you can um, you can use calculator if you want. Okay, any question? Yes, it's symmetrical. Yes, it is symmetrical because they have the same angle. So, yeah, so this is one of the things that you can explore for the Attack on Titan maneuver gear, right? Can two hooks regulate the direction? Or is there a constraint on the direction it can go? Right? Uh, so if I have, um, yeah, everyone is loving this or at least I'm enjoying this Attack on Titan example. So I have a uh, Attack on Titan, I have uh, two hooks, right? Okay, if it's not symmetrical, I got T1 and then uh, T2, okay? So uh, what is the, what is, what are the possible directions that this person can go? Okay, so it can it go here, can it go backwards, right? Using just these two cables, okay? So that's, uh, that is one thing to consider. You can make assumptions to your system. Um, from what we see in the show, right? or the manga, uh, your cable cannot shoot perfectly sideways, right? So maybe you can, you can assume, uh, assume the cable cannot go sideways, so um, the, the range of angle for this person, right, for, for cable one is between, um, maybe let's say it's 45 degrees, right? So 45 degrees, right? So for this cable also, it can be straight, or 45 degrees, right, maximum. I have never seen them shooting sideways, so there must be some maximum angle here. So we can assume the angle of each cable of each cable is uh, somewhere between 45 to 0 degrees. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I'm assuming you're talking about this, right? Yes. So, uh, so, um, so why am I like wasting so much time talking about this? This is like one, one. Um, it's a fun example, right? For fun, but it is also a, a correct way to think about a physical problem, right? So you have a situation, because in real, if you are using physics in real life, right? Uh, you are not given all the information, like like in the exam paper, right? So in the example or exam, they give you all this thing, okay? So in real life, you don't know all this information. So you need to think, okay, so if this is true, then what will happen? Or if this is not possible, then what is not possible? Okay, so that is why I, I'm, I'm teaching you to, to think in this kind of way. Okay, so like this, okay. And even in real life, you can somehow obtain this information is you do something to get the information in the first place, right? So how do you get the information? Okay, you can measure this, okay, and um, and, and things like that. And actually, right, just to, like, uh, interesting situation is that, uh, for example, 2.1.2, right, why, why do I say the mass is 67 kg is because I went to Google the weight of Tom Cruise and, and, then, it's, and then it's approximately 67. Okay, so that is how you do things. Uh, uh, if, if you really want to do it, the, if you want to get the correct information and things like that. Okay. Um... So let's go to the next example. Okay, I'm not mute, right? Yeah, yeah, so man, yes, uh, correct, correct. So both cable, yes, that's also implicit assumption. Both cable having the same length and in equilibrium. Uh, so they have the same t angle and same tension and everything the same. <laughs> I mean, if you want to, <laughs> yeah, it's still not finished, right? There's still, the story is still not finished, I believe. So there's still more seasons to go on. Next example, 2.1.5. Mm. Okay. So for this example, um, yeah, we keep track of the time uh, maybe after this um, maybe we can take a break
uh, let's see what time I finish this example. So for this example, uh, I have two messes right uh, in this configuration suspended on two pulleys. So these two pulleys are fixed right somewhere, and then the tension on this string is labeled T1, T2. So uh, I want to find out what is the value of T2. Okay, so let's so let us explore this problem. What I have here is um, I have one pulley over here and then on this side I got a mass so this mass is M1 and then another pulley over here is suspending another mass which I call M2 and then another pulley attached to here a second pulley and this one is fixed to the ground so if this is fixed to the ground that means uh, it's tight so uh, it's not moving so this part cannot move and then it depends on uh, this okay so this is the the lesson that I want to teach you in this example is if we are assuming ideal pulley uh, ideal pulley means uh, no friction uh, um, uh, uh, so yeah uh, frictionless no not to say no friction but um, massless and uh, no energy loss okay uh, or I know we haven't talked about energy yet but uh, I guess you know what I mean by an ideal pulley right so this is pulley okay this is where the direction of tension is important remember tension right is always away from the object right now I have two objects so I'm going to have two free body diagrams okay so um, so one thing to to take note is when drawing this type of uh, free body diagram especially when I have pulleys and strings is that for the case of ideal pulley right uh, the the string will have the same the same tension uh, magnitude of tension uh, throughout what do I mean? So it will be clear what this means when I start drawing the free body diagram. So let's draw the free body diagram of uh, M1. Okay. So M1 is over here, right? What are the forces acting on M1? Okay. So what are the forces acting on M1? Well, let's look at everything only on focusing on M1. We don't care about M2 yet. So for M1, right? M1 is attached to a string. So the direction of tension, as I said, is always away. So we say this is uh, T1. In the, in the question, is labeled as T1 over here. And then, of course, there is a weight. So I got M1G, right? So the net force, uh, so the net force acting on this will be zero. We will take upwards as positive. Therefore, I got T1 minus Mg is equals to zero. So this is my equation one. Follow so far? Okay, so very so far very simple, right? So this is the free body diagram of M1. Next thing is I want to draw the free body diagram of M2. So this is where you have to be careful and this is where students are uh, most likely to make mistakes in the previous uh, experience. Okay, so what are the forces acting on M2? Uh, there's always a weight, so let's start with that as M2G right um, it is attached to two strings okay so here and here what are the directions okay so the most common mistake people say right is that okay this is T1 when they see this picture they draw this T1 away and then they follow the, ar the arrow here and then they say the T1 is coming down so we say the T T1 is downwards correct or wrong wrong right so we do not say this is down okay so we do not say it like that because tension is a string right a string a string can only push a uh, can only pull you right a string can only pull you it cannot push so it can only use it to pull something right so t1 is away and because this is an ideal pulley ideal pulley is if this is the same string then the whole string will have t1 it's always t1 okay uh as long as it is the w one piece of string this is one piece of string so one piece of string will have one one, one value of tension so this is t1 over here 
then for this side it is attached to a second thing so it is uh, T2 right so this is T2 okay so T2 and this is one piece of string so the whole thing got T2 so over here is also T2 but um, uh, it's not relevant does uh, is we don't care about what happens here uh, so I guess this is clear right uh, then the net forces acting on this is the upwards is T1 plus T2 minus M2G and this is equals to zero right so this is equation two okay so yeah in fact we uh, let's let's not call this equation three uh, I want to save one step uh, from this right we conclude that t1 is equal to mg I'll just save some space to immediately substitute uh, t1 into here okay so from this equation I got this is m1 right so m1g plus t2 minus m2g is equals to zero so we got a formula which says that t2 is equals to uh, m2 minus m1g am I right okay so we have found the expression for t2 any question you still talking about attack on titan yeah uh, OBS still recording okay any question let's see what is this then Mikasa swinging against the wall right so this is the the what, the city walls okay uh, so so this is the value of the tension now because right um, let's look at this expression over here so my tension depends on m2 minus m1 okay so m2 minus m1 this term can be a positive or negative number because uh, I have not decided what is the masses yet right so it could be anything right m2 could be heavier m1 could be heavier okay so if m2 is heavier than m1 if m2 has a larger mass than m1 then this expression is positive then t2 gives you a positive tension so positive tension is consistent right so tension uh, magnitude should be positive away from the object right then you see what happens if m2 is lighter than m1 okay so if m2 is lighter than m1 right if m1 is heavier then I get a negative T2 what does negative T2 means when you draw your free body diagram correctly right right tension is moving away and then when you get a negative T it means that your your string will loosen okay can you see I got too much stuff behind me so positive tension means the string is tight okay it's tight okay it's tight positive tension if you calculate something you get negative tension means the string will loosen okay and that is true because if m1 is heavier right it will pull this thing up so the this string will loosen will loosen up and this will go up okay so that is how you interpret your situation if you get this type of expression right tension positive means something tension negative also means uh, something okay okay any question uh, so if not uh, I, I guess it's a good time to take a break so let us uh, take a break for about five minutes and once we I think when we come back um, yeah we can do the tutorial we can do some tutorial questions okay so I will stop OBS recording uh, OBS stop test test one two um, wait, no not here Okay, uh, everyone still seeing my screen, right? Yes. Okay, uh, good. So you can see my screen here. Then we can continue with the tutorial. So, uh, yeah. So for the tutorial, um, let's. Uh, I will choose some questions for you to do la. Uh, for question one, uh, for I will do some of them. Um if I skip any question then you can uh, ask me again uh, let me know uh, if I if there's still time uh, I will cover it or in the next tutorial I will cover it but for for this tutorial um, 
let's do some uh, simple and some hard questions. The first question I believe should be considered quite simple, right? Uh, everyone should be able to do. You have um, it's just to practice on calculating the numbers. Uh. So, and it's also a surprising thing if you consider the particles of the object. Is 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 some uh is to is a lesson to learn that actually atoms is a very very small thing and many many atoms used to build certain uh, things. So um, if on your wedding day you have a gold ring, initially it's three point eight grams. 50 years later, it becomes 3.35 grams. So that means some mass has been lost. So you can calculate the difference. Okay. So on average, you can calculate how many atoms are lost per second. And given the atomic gas is uh, atomic mass of gold is 197U, U is, is just 1.66, right? So uh, we will not be using atomic mass unit outside of this question. So I'm giving you this. So uh, the calculation is just very simple. It's just. Um, you have the mass of gold lost, so you find the difference is 0.45 grams. Okay, and then, uh, yeah, so is this many kg? Convert to SI unit. So the mass of one gold atom is 197 times U. U is given in the question, so it's this many kg, right? 10 to the power 25 kg. So from this is one atom, then this is the total mass loss. So from there, you can estimate the number of atoms lost by dividing the two numbers. So you get 1.38 times 10 to the 21 atoms. So it's a lot of atoms. But you lose this many atoms over 50 years, which is also a very long time. So let's calculate how much atoms you lose per second. So atom loss per second is n over t. So if you divide uh, 50 years, converting to seconds is just multiply everybody here. You get 8.75 times 10 to the power 11 atoms per second. Okay, so uh, that is this much atoms per loss. So even in one second, right, you can lose a, uh, this this many 1,000 billion atoms per second. It's entirely possible because atoms are so tiny, right? So you scrape off some piece of gold, right? You lose a, a huge number of atoms, okay? Uh, so the next question is probably a little bit harder. So let me solve this in more detail. I'm recording, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Uh, so, the next question is this. Um, okay, so for the next question, uh, hang on. Uh, we have uh, three physical quantities uh, given by all these formulas. I just realized, I just noticed that if I need to do this for the OBS to record, so I need to remember to do this. Okay, so uh, yeah, so uh, I have uh, three physical quantities given by uh, kappa, lambda, and b. So you are given the SI units for these quantities as well, so you can determine the dimensions of this object. And then what you're supposed to do is to find the combination that gives a new quantity that has a dimension of only length, and then find its total value to the correct units. So let's try to uh, let's try to do this. Okay. So let's uh, bring this back and bring this back. So how are we supposed to do this? So this is question two. Okay. We have kappa, which is sixty three point five, uh, whatever quantity this is, kg per second, and then we got lambda, which is forty nine point one meters per second square. So lambda is a number of this one is something like acceleration. And then uh, B is 90.0 meter cube per kg. So from there we can, uh, based on reading the SI unit, we I can get the dimension of kappa. So the dimension of kappa is uh, m divided by time, right? And the dimension of lambda is a length meters divided by second square. So it's a length divided by time square. And then the dimension of B is three lengths and one mass so length cube mass inverse okay so i got the dimensions now and then i want to find the combination to get the dimension of length right so combination is like kappa uh, times lambda times b okay you you cannot plus 
objects of different dimension you cannot but you can multiply them together but you multiply them also you not necessarily get what you want so you might you can what you can do is you can raise it to some power so let's raise it to some m power and then some power n and some n okay so what i want is i want to find this to get something that has the dimension of length okay so that means i need to choose the correct m n and l i want to choose the correct number so that after i raise to the power and multiply everybody together the final result has only the dimension of length okay so that is what we are going to do everyone follow so far okay so if everyone uh follow so what i'm going to do is i want to say that uh this quantity should only have the dimension of length okay so this quantity should only have dimension of length and what is this quantity so uh this quantity is basically just for dimensions i can split this up i should get the dimension of length and then dimension of kappa is empty to the power minus one and then i raise this to the power m so if i raise this to the power m i got capital m power n and then t negative m and then the lambda is lt square so lt power minus two so it's ln t minus 2n right and then this thing to the power l which means this thing to the power l so i got l 3l m minus l and everything after i simplify i should end up with just capital l on this side okay so i can group the terms together because there's an m there's an m here so i got m m minus l and then there's an l and l here so it's l n plus 3 small l and then there's a t so i got t is negative m minus 2n okay so this whole thing i want to make everything in the end to be l <laughs> legendary dimension analysis uh yeah so that is the basically dimension analysis but uh a more legendary <laughs> or, or a more um not so straightforward version of it right so uh, how do I want this to be L? So if I want this to be L, right, uh, there's no M on the right hand side. So how do I make M disappear? I can make it to the power zero, right? So uh, that means what I'm going to do is comparing both sides. So this thing must be disappear. The T must disappear. This thing should left with power one. So that means uh, comparing both sides, I want M to disappear. So uh, m minus l should make it to the power zero then it will disappear okay so in other words uh, l is equal to m that is my first equation and then this thing should end up with just power one in other words n plus 3l is equal to one so what i got is uh, well n is equal to one minus 3l and l is equal to m so i can just put this into here so i got uh, n is 1 minus 3 m am i right correct so far okay so that is the l right how about the t power so the t power i also want this to be zero so that means negative m minus 2 n i also want this to be zero okay but 2 n right i know i got this n so i can substitute into here the n here which is to say that I bring this m on this side and then I got negative 2, 1 minus 3m. Am I right? So I got minus 2 plus uh, 6m is equal to m. So uh, 5m is equal to 2. In other words, m is equal to 205. Right? Correct, right? So I got m is equal to 205. And since l is the same as n, therefore I got l is also 2 over 5. And then n is 1 minus this. So n is 1 minus 3m. So 2 over 5. So this is uh, 5 over 5 minus 6 over 5. So it's negative 1 fifth. Okay, so uh, finally I got my answer. Uh, after solving simultaneous equation. Like this. Right? So now I got the all these things. So I put this back into my... Uh, combination okay so what i wanted is m is two fifth this is minus one fifth and this is two fifth so kappa m lambda nbl is 
kappa 2 over 5, lambda minus 1 over 5, and then b 2 over 5. Okay, so to make it look nicer, uh, this is just actually kappa square b square over lambda, and then the whole thing to the power 1 over 5. Okay, and then if you plug in the, the values over here, which is what the question is asking for, so this thing squared times this thing squared divided by this and then the whole thing to the power 1 over 5 we end up with 14.8 uh, and then this is a dimension of length only so it's just 14.8 meters okay yeah so this is a uh, dimension analysis okay <laughs> yeah so what's our time? Okay, uh, we have about twenty more minutes. Probably two questions or more. So let's choose. Um, so I believe everyone is okay with this question, right? I will upload the solutions later. You can check your answer, see whether you're correct. Um, but not knowing the answer, but at least you know how to do, right? So I think most of this should be okay. Um, because I'm I'm looking at the time, so. I will let me jump to the maybe this is the harder question of this tutorial so this will take the longest time so uh, let me jump to this and do this first okay so uh, yeah so um, what do I mean is I want to do this question okay so uh, what I'm doing is uh, question 9 let's check everyone else again uh, so no question right looks okay so let's talk about uh, question 9. So for question 9, uh, I have a boy standing on a peak of a hill with this slope. And then the angle of the peak is phi. Uh, what is the angle do you want to throw to get the greatest possible range? So in the lecture on last, was it last week or Monday? Uh, uh, I have, we have solved the problem where the ground is flat. Right? When the ground is flat and then you throw a projectile, we have calculated an example which to get the maximum possible angle, you must throw at 45 degrees. I even play you the video game to show you, right? Remember that? 45 degrees. But in this situation, uh, is it also 45 degrees? Uh, no, we expect not, right? Because it's changed. So we need to calculate the angle correctly in this uh, situation. So let me try to show you. Uh, let, or let me draw this picture and see how we solve this question right so I believe this is the more challenging question and you have maybe attempted and try to solve this right and get stuck somewhere so I will show you the answer now so this is question 9 okay so what we have is a slope okay so I have a slope so let me draw a slope like this that is angle phi downwards from the horizontal axis and usually my habit when doing projectile motion is I should let my starting point be the origin so this is my y-axis and this is going to be my x-axis so if I throw something at some initial angle theta with some initial velocity v as we have derived projectile motion will take the shape of a parabola and then it's going to land on the ground somewhere here right and this is the landing point so what we want to calculate is uh, what is the angle that you throw, right? So what is the angle that you want to throw? We fix initial velocity to give you the largest possible range. Okay, if you throw too high, you might go straight up and come back somewhere nearby. If you throw too low, also it will just drop straight to the ground. So what is the best angle to choose? Okay, so how do we solve this problem? So this is my strategy. Um, we are going to use a bit of calculus uh, because I want to find a maximum or something. So the best calculus will is a uh, is give you the best method to find a maximum or something, right? Differentiation. So we are going to do that. So that is my strategy. So if I want to uh, find the maximum r, I need to get a formula for r. So that is my step one. So I want the, my strategy is to find a formula for r. Okay. So formula for r in terms of what? Because 
it depends on theta, right? Because if I change the theta, I might change my final location. I want to find the theta to get the furthest possible location. So uh, in the language of calculus, I want to find r as a function of theta, right? Then if I want to find the maximum r, then it is basically differentiating theta, and then I want to get zero, okay? So that is our uh, strategy over here. So how do we solve this? So let's try to uh, recall what do we have so far. Okay, so this is a uh, projectile motion, and then this is my landing point. Okay, if I draw this as my origin, then I can write down the x and y coordinate of my landing landing point. Am I right? So my x coordinate is what? This is r. This angle is phi. So uh, the x coordinate is r cos phi. Am I right? Okay, and then the vertical is. I, I put this as my origin, right? So this is below by r sine phi. So this is r sine phi negative. Okay. So this is the first piece of information I have now. Okay. So this is the information I have. Now, what else do I have? Well, uh, I want to find a formula for r. So I need something else. So the something else is this. This is a projectile motion. So since this is a projectile motion, I will use my projectile formula. So my projectile formula is y is equal to uh, x tangent theta minus gx square over 2v square cos square theta. Right? So this is my second piece of information. Okay? So I have x, y, and then all this stuff here with angle, and then I have r cos theta, r phi theta here. So what I can do is I can substitute this inside. Right? Once I substitute this inside, I can find my formula for R. Okay, so that is our uh, what we shall do. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to substitute. Okay, so I'm going to uh, substitute equation uh, 1 into 2. Okay, so let's substitute. Right, so on the left hand side, just negative R sine phi. And then on the right hand side is x tangent theta, so x is r cos, so I got uh, r cos uh, phi tangent theta, and then uh, gx square, so square of this, so I got r square cos square phi uh, divided by uh, divided by two v square cos square theta. Okay, so still the same thing, right? Uh, I can cancel one factor of r because definitely I don't care about r equals to 0 and then I want to rearrange this equation so rearrange this equation there's many ways you can do to simplify it right there's no right or wrong way so what I will do is uh, what I find that is that will make the equation more simple is I will divide both sides by sine phi so that my left hand side make it equals to 1 okay so if I divide by sine phi then this one becomes cotangent phi and then this is tangent theta Right, and then this one divide sine phi. This part a bit messy, so not uh, cannot really simplify here. So I got r g cos square phi divided by two v square cos square theta, and then dividing by sine phi. Right, so I got sine phi over here. Okay, so I got this equation now. But we must remember. But we must remember what we are doing, right? Because what what we want to do is to find a formula for r so i want to make r the subject of this equation so i want to put r to one side and then everything else i put on the other side of the equation okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring this over so bring this over so i get something with a positive r and then this negative one i just put it here so i got cotangent phi tangent theta and then this one i put it here right and then I want to make R as the subject. So if I bring this over, all this other factor, I, I put it back to the other side. So I end up with 2V square cos square theta sine phi divided by uh, G cos square. G cos square phi. Okay. Follow so far? Right. So... Uh, well, I have a formula for R now, right? So I got a formula for R So that is almost settled, but um, But this is where you can make your life easier even though you have a formula for R 
Well, you might be tempted to do the next step right now. Differentiate this with respect to theta to find maximum. Okay? But then if you see this equation, right, if I want to try to differentiate this, I will get a huge mess. Correct? Because this is cos squared times tangent squared. So you need to use the product rule, right? Differentiate this, then, then differentiate tangent, and then you get a lot of stuff. Which is correct. You can do that if you want. But I want to make my equation nicer before differentiating, just to make my life easier. So before I, before I differentiate, I want to simplify first. Okay? Simplify first. And to simplify, uh, you realize that this is 2 cos squared. I can multiply this term inside the bracket, right? And then I can use trigo formula to simplify this. So what I have outside is all this will be constant. So this will not be differentiated. Okay? And then this one will multiply inside. So cosine squared times tangent will be sine cos, right? Sine over cos times cos squared. So it's got two sine cos. And then this is cotangent phi. Cotangent phi is constant. I'm, I'm just differentiating theta later. And then I multiply this, so I got 1 times this, so I have 2 cos square theta. Okay? So this one I can simplify, right? Because you realize that 2 sine cos is just sine 2 theta. Cos 2 theta, if you use the trigo identity, identity is 1 plus cosine of double angle formula. Right? So finally, I got my r as a function of theta that is easier to differentiate okay so basically i got a uh, cotangent phi sine 2 theta and then plus uh well i plus cosine 2 theta plus 1 okay so finally i got my uh r as a function of theta so this step settled so everyone follow the story so far Okay, so looks like no question, right? Still recording? Yes. So let's, uh, now, now we finish the first step. So let us uh, continue the second step, which is to differentiate. Uh, can't get the simplification, uh, which part? Uh, okay, so to sim uh, so I got this formula, right? So I just want to manipulate this equation. So I purposely, I purposely choose these two numbers to multiply into the bracket. Okay, and to multiply into the bracket, right, uh, you realize that um, 2 cos square theta times tangent theta, right, so I will times tangent theta. Now, times tangent theta is 2 cos square theta. Tangent theta is sine over cos. So I cancel one of this, and then I got 2 sine cos. And then times 1 is the same. So that's why I got, uh, if I times it inside, I got this plus this. 2 cos squared. Oh, uh, the cos squared is the identity. Basically, uh, uh, cos squared theta is half plus half cos double angle. The, the cos squared theta. The double angle formula. Okay, uh, so if still not clear, just uh, con just uh, ask some more. Um, continue asking. Uh, but um, but let's say we have this equation, we can now differentiate this. Okay, so let us try to differentiate this equation. So sine theta, g cos square phi. Yeah. So while I'm writing, if you have any question, you can ask me or write it there. Uh, I, because the writing also takes time for me here. So differentiating this, I got uh, sine 2 theta. So I got 2. 2 differentiate becomes a cosine. Differentiate this becomes negative 2 sine. Differentiate this becomes 0. Okay? And then if I want to find the maximum, the derivative must be 0. So this expression must be 0. Right? So first of all, uh, this one is never zero, so no need to worry about this. So I just want this to be zero. To be zero. And actually both has a factor of two, so I can cancel out the two. Right? And then if I I move this here, so I got uh so I got cotan 
tangent phi cos 2 theta is equals to sine 2 theta. So I move the sine 2 theta there, and then I move this thing down. So I got sine over cos is equals to cotangent phi. So this one is a uh, tangent of 2 theta is equals to cotangent phi. Okay, so now we have found the, the optimum angle already. So the optimum angle is the inverse tangent of this thing divided by 2. So that is the correct answer already. Okay, so I think it should be okay, right, Charles, uh, the, about the cosine? Okay, so, um, so this is the optimum angle, but let me show you one more trick to simplify even further. So I'm going to use another identity. Uh, that is a cotangent of alpha, right? If I shift it by 90 degrees, I get this formula. Okay, so you can you expand this and prove this using the identity lah. But uh, once you realize this, because I purposely want to change both sides to a tangent. So once I change both sides to a tangent, everything looks very nice. Okay, so I got tangent uh, two theta, and then on the right hand side I got tangent pi over two minus alpha. So once both sides are tangent, then uh, the tangent of the two angles are the same. Therefore, the angles inside uh, must be the same. Right, assuming everything is between 180 to 0 degrees. So that means I got this equation. Then the optimum angle is just pi over 4 minus, uh, we're talking about phi, right? Phi. So the phi over 2. Okay, so the best angle depends on your slope. Okay, so the best angle depends on your slope, phi. So if I throw this uh, at the best optimum angle, it will get the furthest possible r. Okay, any higher than this or any lower than this, I will get a nearer r. So that is my answer for this over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, trigonometry. It's hard, but if you if you use them right. Well, it, it will make your life so much easier, right? It's hard, but uh, but once we do this, right, then suddenly it's a simple function to differentiate, right? So if you ignore the trigonometry, then you differentiate this, then you get a product rule and all this, then you get a huge mess. Okay, so yeah, it's, it's worth our effort to practice a lot of trigonometry and it will help us simplify a lot of equations. Okay, this is page seven. Yeah, true. It's useful. Okay, so... Any other question? This is probably the hardest problem. Uh, if you can do this, then a lot of the other ones should be not much of a big deal. Right? So let's do one more other question. Uh, which one do you want to do? Let's choose one. I think I think maybe I want to do this because I, I was mentioning this in the lecture a bit. Then the rest are um, so this is yeah, this is the the probably the next most the least familiar to you guys. So I think I'll choose to do this question. The so let me let the OBS capture this. Okay, so the question that I want to do next is question twelve. So for question 12, okay, everyone is okay. I'm still recording. OBS is still recording. So for question uh, 12, right, is to talk about the circular motion, remember? So we were talking about circular motion, right? In the, in last Wednesday's lecture, uh, I derived the centripetal acceleration vector and also the magnitude, right? We got V squared over R. And we can do it in a more mathematical way that is more useful if the motion is more complicated, which is to say that I want to describe using parametric equations. So for, I believe for MAT students, right? Uh, you are learning the parametric equation right now in calculus two, uh, chapter 10 of Stewart. So parametric equations. 
and for the physics student you will learn it you will take calculus in the next semester parametric equations so but parametric equation is a lot of big topic but for now for, for it, as far as we are concerned today right they are just vectors which we can differentiate and we already know how to handle them because I, I show you the position vector where we differentiate them to get the velocity right so that is exactly what we are going to do now okay so it's not that complicated just follow the method and it will give you exactly the same result okay so for this question for this question right um, the trajectory of a particle is given by this the question did not say this but ultimately it becomes it's actually a circular motion right so so let me talk talk about this question in this way so let's say I have the position vector of a particle this is kinematics so this particle is moving so at different times you get different positions so for this particular question the position is given by this so it's cos omega t in the i direction and then sine omega t in the j direction okay so from here right um, I'm not really answering question 12 I'm just talking about this equation uh, just, just, just in, uh, in case you're wondering so for this, for this position vector right notice what is the magnitude okay so the magnitude of this position vector which I just call r right is well it's just r square cos square omega t plus r square sine square omega t and then square root okay so the magnitude of this is just capital R right sine square plus cos square is equals to 1 that means right my motion however the particle is moving right the distance from the origin no matter what your x and y is the distance from the origin is always 1 so this is circular motion okay so well, every time I, I struggle to draw a circle okay so the distance is always 1 so the particle the x and y coordinates is always not one r okay okay so um as you can see right the angle is going to be omega t right so at time zero the particle is here as time increases it will be here coming here coming here and then it will keep on rotating around the circle right so this is the position vector of the uh particle what's the velocity so to get the velocity right we just need to differentiate this so we differentiate r with respect to t so what i have here is basically i got r negative omega sine omega t and then uh, plus omega cos omega t in the j component so uh, both terms have omega so i can take this out and then i got sine omega t i and then plus cosine j so this is a sine and a cos right so from here we can get the magnitude of this is if you calculate the magnitude right this square plus this square will just becomes one so you just end up with r omega right so v equals to r omega something familiar from your circular motion and what happens if i take r dot v so r dot v right is i take these two vectors dot with each other so i got r cosine omega t i plus sine omega t j and then dot with omega r you're gonna get zero lah if you actually if you you can probably see by now uh, if not i will work it out because uh, the constant in front will stay the same so we'll keep them together omega r times i is omega r square then dot product right remember the x times x so i got x times x so i got uh, negative cos omega t and then sine and then plus the other component y times y so y times y it will give you sine omega t uh, cos omega t so this is the negative of this so these two cancel each other so the dot product is zero when these two have zero dot product what does it mean it means that r is perpendicular to v okay so if you look at this vector right uh, the direction of this velocity vector is actually over here and it is perpendicular to your position vector okay so that is for the velocity okay so hopefully everyone is following so far uh, then let's look at the acceleration next so acceleration is differentiating the velocity 
So my acceleration is dv dt. Right? So differentiating the velocity, I will just get omega square r. And then differentiating, I got negative cos omega t. And then negative sign omega t j. So the negative sign I can factorize, so I get just negative omega square r and then cos omega t i plus sine omega t j. Okay, so notice that this is something familiar, right? This was the vector that we started with. This is this whole thing is just the original position vector. So my acceleration vector is this constant times my position vector with a negative sign. Okay, so from here we conclude that A is opposite direction to R. Okay, so that is how we can get the centripetal acceleration vector. Okay, so my R vector is pointing out here, so my acceleration vector is pointing inside towards the center of the circle. Okay, let's find out what, what is my uh, magnitude next. So my magnitude is uh, A is just omega square R then magnitude of this right so magnitude of this just now we calculated is also another capital R so omega square R square uh, hang on a second did I do something wrong oh yeah yeah there's just one R so it's omega square R that's my mistake um, this whole thing is R so the capital R is inside here so yeah, this I wrote one extra r. Okay, so a is r omega square, right? Then remember, just now we calculated, right? We have calculated the magnitude of the velocity was v is r omega. So I can eliminate the omega, which is just v over r. So I can put this inside here. And what we have found is a formula that we derived on Wednesday, last Wednesday, is uh, v square. Uh, v squared over r squared times r so my acceleration magnitude is just v squared over the radius of your circular motion right so this is the second way to derive derive the the circular motion okay any questions so far Okay, so um, this is um, so hopefully this is a more convincing derivation because uh, on when the the original way I derived this in the previous lecture right was to I was drawing the picture and then I say that the arrow is and the limit the arrow is going to point towards the center but it's sort of like not very accurate picture right not very convincing but if I express this in a more like concrete mathematical formula then definitely we prove for sure that. Uh, the, the acceleration vector is negative of your position vector so that means it is pointing straight towards the origin because your, ori your position vector is from the origin out so acceleration vector is the other way pointing towards the origin exactly right uh, exactly towards the origin okay so yeah so these are the two uh, harder questions that, that in this tutorial um, so maybe in the next this one is probably a bit hard the navigation question uh it's not hard it's just that students are not used to relative motion right so um but we i don't think we have much time left to cover this so ah yeah that's right uh the reason why we know it's the opposite is because of the negative sign the the a So if I have two vectors, right? Uh, I have a vector, let's say vector a, and then uh, and then I have a vector b, right? So that means uh, so in the same direction, which is this means that uh, it means that uh, a is a negative number times b, right? Um, so in the simple example is uh, I have a vector, right? So let's say I have an origin here. Okay. Uh, hmm, let's think of some simple, simple vector. La. So 
let's say this is 1 1 so uh, I have a vector a is just i plus j right and then uh, and then I have another vector that is negative 2i minus 2j right so if I have this vector negative 2i 2j right, it's actually negative 2i plus j so b is negative 2a so my vector b is twice the length of a but pointing in the other direction uh, oh what is the physical quantity between the dot product of a and r um, there is no physical quantity it's just the mathematical operation a dot r uh, yeah, it's basically just acceleration times r. La. So it's not like a velocity or, or, or something. So yeah, uh, it's not a, a quantity that we will learn in physics, like, uh, like work done or something, not yet, at least not yet. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other question? Did I miss out anything else just now? Let's see if I miss out anything. Yeah, so someone told me the Attack on Titan manga is ended. Okay, so I, I didn't know that. Uh, the the series is uh, um, on Netflix, it's not yet ended. So I, I'm, I watched until season 4 or something like that. So if there is... Uh, okay. Oh, final arc. So near near the end. Okay, interesting. Okay, uh, so today has been a very Attack on Titan lecture. Uh, if that's, uh, but the time is, uh, I, I guess uh, we have, that's about enough time uh, for us today. There's not enough time for me to start a new question. So uh, if there's no, if there's nothing else, uh, I guess we can end the lecture for today. And we will continue in the next, um, next Monday. So next Monday we are still MCO so uh, everyone will still be online. Okay so if there's no other question that's all for today. I will stop the recording and I will hang on stop recording and I will stop the OBS recording. <coughs>